Hi all, uh, welcome to my channel. Um, so I recently got into RC about two months ago uh, for something to do, and this was a car I bought. It was a Kraton 4S V2. Um, great car, love it, great fun. It has got its flaws. One of them, well, the main one being the steering. The steering is just shocking. Um, what I've come down to find is is the servo saver. So I, after running it for a couple of runs, it started going really poor. So I went out and I bought this servo. Being uh, obviously new to the hobby, I just thought oh, it's got to be the servo. The servo's given up. So I went out and bought this. It's quite cheap, twenty quid bit more powerful than the standard one fitted that and um, had exactly the same issue um, just wooden steer massive turning circle grass was a no-go just wouldn't steer at all um, so then I fitted a plastic servo horn just to um, rule out a few things and I fitted the servo horn which was without the servo saver and it was like a different car honestly it turned on a dime um, it, it was mental the difference just by uh, changing it out so this is the culprit standard um, 23 tooth armour servo saver so that was causing the issue so I've seen a few people on the forums using um, Kimbro servo savers, uh, modified them slightly to fit. So, went out, bought one of them. I also changed the servo again uh, for a bit of a more powerful one, a bit of a quicker one, and fitted the new Kimbro servo saver. And it did make a big difference. But it's still not amazing. I took it to a track the other day. Granted, obviously, it's not the best vehicles to use on a track. But I took it to a track, which is a grass track, and it just wouldn't turn. I had X Maxes running rings around me. They were turning like a go kart compared to this. So, another look on the Facebook page forums, and I found out some people were using these. This is a lossy LMT servo saver, which is adjustable. And they said they've had great success fitting these and it's made a massive difference. So this is what I'm going to be doing today. So I haven't done this before. I'm, I've heard there's a few modifications that need doing. So I'm going to make this video just to show you uh, how it's done and give you a bit of a walkthrough hopefully get your crate on or outcast or whatever it is get into steer properly and uh, this is the issue look it just won't turn when it's on a flat surface I guess not moving but like that is poor and you really notice it when you're driving on high grip surfaces like grass and stuff like that so let's hope that we can get that to turn a bit better. So first things first, I need to get this uh, chassis brace off. Obviously, if you're not running a chassis brace, then you don't need to do this. Although I do highly recommend running a chassis brace on this model, because this is the third chassis so far I've gone through.
The next thing to do will be to undo these four screws per here and the one connecting the horn to the steering assembly. So I'll just stop that by there, get them undone. So now you have this. I've disconnected the uh, motor from the SC just to make it a bit easier to work on. So now we need to get this servo, servo off. So we've got four screws there and that switch needs to come off as well. So let's get doing that. So that is the Kimbrough servo saver which I fitted. So you have to trim them a bit to get them to fit. But that's off. So now we need to look at how this new one is going to fit. Right, so as you can see straight away that horn is going to foul on that casing. That's fine, we can trim that away with a Dremel. And it's also going to need, servo is going to need spacing up otherwise that is going to hit the chassis. So let's have a look at doing that. So as you can see now there's plenty of window, but it's still catching on the corner. So, so yeah, maybe turn that off as well. Basically, what I've got is these. These are um, servo spacers. They're two mil thick, so I've ordered six of them. So I can space it out six mil each side. But as I found, just by placing that in there, that servo is still going to catch on the so. It's just a bit of trial and error to be honest, so I'm going to have to cut a bit more out of there. Um, I won't video that, but it's just you know, so you know that if you've um, cut out the same amount as I have but there, you're going to need to cut out a little bit more. Alright, so that's all cut out and I've checked it, if it needs a bit of tidying up. If you want to, you don't have to. Obviously, it's it's not going to be seen. But if you want it to look a bit better, then you can tidy it up. Um, obviously, as we're spacing the servo off, the screws need to be longer. These are 20 mil M3 by 20 mil screws that I've just picked up from Screwfix because I forgot I would need longer screws. Would prefer them to be hex, but they'll do for now. So. Get that fitted on now with the spacers. So bear I realised that um, the holes in the spacers weren't big enough so I had to drill them out to 3.5 millimetres. As you can see I've uh, drilled them out to 3.5 mil. Could probably get away with 3 mil but I wanted a bit of wiggle room so they should fit now.
Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, that was a bit of a fiddle lining all that up, but they're on there now, spaced out. I am still a bit, that is protruding from the bottom still. But I know it's spaced up, I need to clean all this out. It's spaced up off the chassis anyway, so we will see how it goes. And uh, if it's not enough, I will have to space it a bit more. Alright, so now all that's uh, fitted, servo's on, you want to um, centre the servo by uh, knocking the, connecting it back up and turning the car on. The remote's on, that's the switch. So that's servo now, should be centre. So we can put the go work there. So uh, we can put the servo saver on now. So knock that bug off. Right, so that's back on straight. So we just gotta screw the saver on. Don't forget to check a little bit of Loctite on. Just to stop that coming undone. And where's my screwdriver? This recess is quite deep in here, so it's a bit fiddly. Getting the screw to line up. I also forgot to mention that you will yeah, probably need a smaller tight. screw so to fit the saver to the saver. So basically you just want to screw it back on then. I've only put two screws, two screws in for now, just to um, make sure there's nothing rubbing or anything. Um, and just knock it on and uh, see if the wheels are straight. So let's have a look. Knock the controller on, knock that on. Wheels look slightly off, but I was expecting that a little bit as the horn is slightly longer, so might have to adjust the steering rate a bit. Let's see if it's made a difference. Oh my god! Whoa, that is amazing! Right, let's get it all bolted back together properly because. Obviously the diff housing's all hanging out, but straight off the bat that looks like it's made a massive improvement. Alright, that's all bolted back together, fitted a battery, so we'll uh, give it a quick run now, see how it goes. Guys, I am blown away by the difference this makes. Look at this. I could never even dream about doing that before. Like, this thing turns on a dime now. See if I can... Sorry for the poor footage, but I'm trying to hold my phone while I record it, but that is amazing. I can't believe the difference. Like, that's insane. So, I hope this has found you, uh, found, um, you found this video a bit helpful, because this is probably one of the best mods you can do to this car regarding the steering. 
So I highly recommend doing it, definitely.